We present a novel, semi-dense approach to monocular visual odometry. Instead of using key points, our method operates on a semi-dense inverse depth map, which is a dense depth map for all image regions that carry information. This allows tracking through sequences with very little to no key points, as the one shown here. As an addition to image corners, it can also naturally exploit information along straight or curved lines in the image. Further, it provides rich information about the 3D structure of the environment in real time, much more than just a collection of key point positions. Here you can see a long and challenging video sequence recorded outside. All computations are performed in real time on a consumer laptop on the CPU only. Our method is based on a probabilistic depth map representation. Notice how only edges parallel to the camera movement are not used. This is because the depth of these pixels cannot be estimated accurately from stereo. A different reference frame is chosen for each pixel to provide sufficiently large baselines for far away image regions. This allows to simultaneously use geometry at very different depths. Here, for example, clouds and patches of the street right in front of the camera. Our method is highly robust to quick rotations around the optical axis. Like all monocular SLAM or visual odometry methods, however, it requires sufficient translation if the camera is rotated in other directions. This is another sequence containing a lot of camera rotation and objects occluding each other. It was captured in a motion capture system, which is the reason for the flickering lights. Even though we use a simple SSD arrow for stereo and for tracking, our system is remarkably robust to such lightning conditions. On the bottom left you can see a visualization of the pixel's age. It is used primarily to determine suitable reference frames for stereo. Notice how in particular for far away image regions old frames are used, providing a sufficiently large baseline. Now you can see a visualization of the inverse depth variance, again on the bottom left. It typically is large after pixel is initialized and then becomes small as more and more stereo observations are incorporated. The proposed approach maps and tracks on all gradient-rich image regions. In contrast to keypoint-based methods, this naturally includes areas which have gradient in only one direction, for example edges. The probabilistic formulation allows to perform all computations in real time on the CPU. The method is very robust and accurate, even in challenging environments and with fast camera motion, as demonstrated in this video.